Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we're talking about some things that could potentially be making a house, not saying yours, look boring and some easy ways to fix them. Now I'm not saying your house is boring unless you think it is boring because then I agree and hopefully I will be able to help you out with these tips and tricks and we have got some boring things to talk about. So let's get into the video. Now let's start this discussion by talking about white walls. I see it in the comments that a lot of you are over all white walls and spaces and houses and an all white space can certainly look a little bit boring if you are not prepared to live in an all white space. I realized I need to have some color in my space. The rooms, some of those more private areas, I want them to be very vibrant and fun so I can get a little bit of a break from that stark crisp white everything. And I know that's a lot coming from me right now sitting in an all white space surrounded by everything all white and I love that for me. But sometimes it's nice to have a space like that. It can look boring when everything is one note, it's all the same. So adding an accent wall, a fun color to the space can really freshen up and make a space feel unique and vibrant and interesting. As a matter of fact, I wanna hear from my subscribers, what are some of your favorite colors, share with us the names and who makes them so we can all get some ideas. I'm also just looking to see if we're actually picking up anything I'm talking about here, but that's not the point. And if you are not a subscriber already, join the Lashik family. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification. Also, be sure to let me know after you have subscribed so I can personally welcome you to the channel. But an all white space can look a little bit boring if you are in the position where you can't paint those walls because maybe you're just not physically capable of doing it and you can't hire a painter right now. Maybe you're renting and you're like, Garrett, there's not a point and I'm not doing it. I love that for you. I love a little pettiness, a little shade, a little sass, but you can take white into your space. Pull the color of the wall into the actual space. Bring in a big piece, like a bookcase, a sofa, an accent chair, in white, that way the white of your walls feels like an intentional choice as opposed to something we're just dealing with. You can bring that white into the space and then all of a sudden, everything starts to make sense. I always say use three colors in three different ways. White, while not being a color, can be used in that same way. Bring in a white accent chair and then throw a white throw blanket on the sofa. Gorgeous, glamorous, fabulous, and I love that for you. Consider a white bed frame or maybe having your dresser be white. Maybe you bring in a white rug to an area that is a little bit lower traffic because I, I don't wanna encourage you to take on the maintenance of that, but if you really love it, good for you. White can be such a powerful tool, but could easily make a space look boring. And moving on from that, Another thing that definitely can make a house look boring is generic decor. We see it everywhere. It's in all of the department stores, all of the discount stores. We know where you got it from. We know what influencers page you saw it on and it wasn't this one, honey, but that's not the point. I think generic decor can be a little bit boring, but that doesn't mean there isn't a place for it because sometimes you find something that's really cool, interesting, new, and you might see it at some store at your favorite department store where you go and you get your groceries and you're like, let's go down the decor aisle and see if there's something fun. Love that for you. But I think layering pieces together makes a space feel more personal, more unique and interesting. And I mean, find something from another store, find something vintage, antique, make something yourself, paint something, get creative with what you're doing because there's a story there. And that story is what develops and builds personality to a space. Ultimately, we want our homes to be beautiful and magazine photo ready, but we don't live in those magazines and there's a story associated with what's happening in the space. So what is that? What's it saying? And you can do that through decor, collections and collectibles. You all know I'm a collector. I collect a lot of different things, mostly things that are blue, but that's just my personality. I love that and I love to accessorize and decorate and move those pieces around in my space to create some personality, interest, and I can have a lot of fun. I can de-stress by decorating and mixing things together. 
some of which are new, some of which are vintage, and I love mixing high and low. Be sure you're on the lookout there. Find a statement piece that you really love. Maybe it's an investment and that's okay to have in your space, but then mix it in with something that's brand new to make everything feel fresh. A great way to build personality and character and make sure a house does not look boring is not to have that same generic decor that everybody has. Be interesting, be unique, be you, and your space will reflect that. You know what's something else that I think can certainly make a house look boring is everything being in one style. I'm not a person that likes to corner myself into one thing and I like to go with the flow a little bit because you never know what you will be inspired by. But when everything is one style, a house can almost look like it has a theme to it. And that's great for a theme park, but I don't live there. And maybe you wanna live there, that's fabulous and I love it for you. But a home needs to reflect the people that live there and what your tastes are at that moment. So mixing something that's mid-century and postmodern and neoclassic together creates a space that is very interesting, that's different, it's unexpected. I love having my design ideas and perspectives challenged that way because it's interesting, it's unique. I wanna see what other people are coming up with and I can get inspired to do something myself that is really different, really out there. I love that, I think it's so much fun because just like us as people, our homes are individual and unique and they should reflect that and they should have their own personality to them. I like to stick close to the architectural style when it comes to renovations of a home, but then the furniture, that's your story. That's where you can have so much fun and do interesting, vibrant, unique things that really speak to you and tell us something about you. So if you find a piece that does not match everything that's happening, that's the best piece to bring in because it's it, it just throws something into there unique, different that we're not expecting to see. And maybe people come in and they say, that doesn't go in here, it doesn't belong. Good, it started a conversation, you're talking about it. You can say, I fell in love with it so much, I had to have it. Challenge the perspectives, bring in something different that is unexpected into your space because it creates a space that's cool, that's unique, that's different, that we haven't seen before. You know, I'm not saying don't get anything that matches at all, okay? It's gonna look like a thrift store, and <laughs> maybe you like that, okay? You know, go for it, but focus on just bringing something in that you like that works with everything that's happening. You know what that reminds me of? Some of the trends right now. And let's just say there is a trend for everything out there, <laughs> and we can all definitely agree. <laughs> <laughs> but I think trends can actually be a little bit boring when we see the same thing everywhere. It gets so played out so quickly and maybe you like that and I love it for you. But what is really boring when it comes to trends is when everybody is taking advantage of the same trend at the same moment, nobody is really trendy because everybody is doing the same thing. What I think you really should focus on is personal style because that is what happens with a trend. That's where it comes from. And basically what happens is stylish people around the world, when they can't afford what the trend is, they go and look for something that's an alternative, something different that's a little more affordable, and they bring that into their space, they style it, they do the best they can with it, and it usually comes out fabulous. They post it on social media and boom, the next trend is born, the stores start reproducing it, the quality goes down, and all of a sudden everybody has the same thing, which we talked about this in a things my subscribers can't stand video, all of these trends that were so popular and now they're not. You can mix in a handful of trends What's cool right now? What's trending at the moment? Does that work for my space and my style? Oh, it absolutely does. I love that for you. Kind of like my boucle sofa. My style does lean a little bit more eclectic, traditional, and I like to mix in modern pieces. So I knew I really liked the boucle. I like a modern style upholstery piece, and this sofa was the perfect thing, but I waited out the trend a little bit to make sure it was going to be timeless, that I didn't just like it because I was seeing it everywhere. And now that I have my sofa, Sofa. I'm obsessed, I'm in love with it, and Boucle has definitely become a classic. Not that it wasn't a classic before, but it just got more popular, which is an entire thing on itself. We are going to have a really amazing video about trends coming out soon, so be sure you are subscribed for that. But bringing in a trend, mixing that into your personal style as is, always feels more 
interesting, unique. It has personality and that's what we wanna see in a space because trends can be so boring, especially when we are so overexposed to them on social media. There's actually a challenge that I wanna talk about that many, many people are dealing with, especially today, and that is upgrading the builder grade. Many people have builder grade homes and they might've been built 20 and 30 years ago and they're still using the same finishes that builders are putting into homes today. That is generic. It can be very boring and you're like, Garrett, what do I do about it? What's happening here? How do I elevate and upgrade this? Challenge yourself and your perspectives on what that space is, the architectural style, the details and features of that home, of that space, of the, that place you are in, and upgrade it that way. Bring in something unique. Change the style up a little bit or bring in a vibrant color. Builder grade can be a great thing when you like updating and like elevating. But it's also worth noting that you should look at what that element that builder grade item is and how can you elevate it? How can you upgrade it? Maybe you can't afford to change the floors out. Look up that type of flooring and see what other people have done with it. And then maybe put your budget towards having the electricians in to change out the light fixtures. That way you get something really cool, unique, vibrant, a statement piece that'll pull the eye away from maybe that builder grade tile. That's something really wonderful because a builder grade space can feel very boring because we've seen it. We all have it. And that's okay, but we can find ways to make that personal, bring it into our style, or look for creative ways to upgrade, elevate, and change that out. Take the time, put the budget aside to really, really do the job well done and get exactly what you want because putting in brand new floors can make a huge impact in the space because that builder grade tile is a little bit boring. But if you can't afford to do that, get a beautiful rug and change out the light fixture, paint a vibrant color on the wall. I think that's amazing. Upgrading the builder grade is a great way to make sure your home is not boring. You know, it is so important to remember when you are elevating and upgrading and decorating your home is that everything should not be brand new. And I know not everybody wants used, old, or vintage things in their home, and that's okay, but incorporate those in small ways and accessories. Get a vintage wool rug. Oh, that is so beautiful because that has real character. It has history to it. It lends authenticity to a space because everything being brand new can feel very new. It can feel very deprived of character. It can feel a little bit cold and kind of boring, especially since what is new right now is what is trending right now. So your space looks very current. It looks very now. But what about tomorrow? What about six months from now? Because the space is gonna look six months ago. So bringing in some vintage pieces that are from the past that have a history to them can really elevate a space and can bring so much character into the space. It's amazing. And that doesn't have to be some weird, creepy old thing you bought in an antique mall. I mean, I might love that, but maybe it's not for you. Maybe it's an heirloom. Maybe it's a dresser that's in a different vintage style. And on top of all of that, right now what we are seeing is so many reproduction pieces from the past being made today to reference those, but you can look for some of those authentic vintage pieces that are in that postmodern and mid-century style that maybe you like and maybe you wanna bring into your home. I know that's what's very in right now. For me, I just got this really beautiful vintage cabinet. It's absolutely spectacular. I love that piece. It brings so much character to my space, but it's in amazing brand new condition. And that's what you can look for if you don't want something that has that age and character to it, but you at least have a conversation piece. You can say, look at this darling, it's brand new condition. It's vintage original from the 70s. It's a statement piece. It's a conversation piece, but it has history to it. It has some character there because it is vintage and it looks a little bit different. It has that real quality sense to it. I love that. You know, something else I see that really troubles me and makes spaces look bland and boring is no art. Art is life, art is personality, it's character. It defines this moment in time. Art is so valuable, it's so important to have in your home, and I am seeing so many spaces that just have no artwork. It makes a house look so boring because there's, there's nothing there, it's just a blank wall. It literally is a blank wall. 
There's so much unused square footage on your walls, on your ceiling even, that you can put things, you can do unique and cool things with. I'm saying paint your ceilings, I always love that, but hanging artwork on your wall will immediately build personality and character in your home to a space because art is reflective of the person that lives there. And even if you cannot buy a masterpiece by some well-known artist, that's okay. Support a smaller artist. Go online and get a print. Go to a local art fair and support someone in your community. That's always really amazing. Small artists are always looking to sell their work and they're just happy if you really like it. So definitely go out there, look for some good pieces and you can get a great deal, support someone's dream, their passion, and you have a great story about it. Oh, I found this artist at this fair and it's amazing. It's this. That's a conversation piece. And I love that. As a matter of fact, not having conversation pieces is really boring in a home. You've got to have a conversation piece. I want to know the history. I want to know the backstory. What is happening here? Where did you find that? Where'd you get this? Tell me the story. I want to be entertained. I want to be amused. And I want my perspectives to be challenged. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. With all of those things said, Let's just enjoy our lives and not have boring homes because I know that you know someone, they've got a boring home. Share with me the mistakes they're making and why their space is boring because I wanna hear from you, I wanna know. Give this video a like and be sure you are subscribed if you have not already. I also know that you know someone, probably your sister-in-law that you can't stand. Her house is boring. Send this video to her because friends help friends even if you're not really friends. And I will see you in the next one.